Hi, I'm John Gonzalez. And I'm Amy Sherman. We're about to show you how to have a Michigan's Best Day in Southwest Michigan. At the south end of Lake Michigan, Berrien County acts as the gateway to millions of travelers heading north in search of adventure across Michigan. But you don't have to go too far to find your escape. This region has long been a summertime destination for those escaping the hustle and bustle of the daily grind. Today we're in downtown St. Joseph, where we're going to show you how water, wine, and delectable dining make southwest Michigan a summertime destination. First up, kick off your shoes, put on your flip-flops, and head for the water. With two major rivers and 42 miles of Lake Michigan shoreline, water sports abound in St. Joe. Head to Third Coast Surf Shop to find rentals and lessons from their staff of experts to get you out on the water. For beginner paddlers, their Paw Paw River launch site puts you in a gentle, no wave experience to master maneuvering on the water. Take in an hour or two of serene paddling on this wide stretch of river as you wind past Harbor Shores Golf Club and marshlands filled with wildlife. If you're looking for a little more adrenaline, try to catch a wave on Lake Michigan. Most people obviously don't know that you can surf on the Great Lakes. You can surf year round. Essentially, the colder the weather, the more consistent the surfing is. There's no sharks, right? <laughs> no, no sharks in the Great Lakes, no jellyfish. You're in fresh water. So at Third Coast Surf Shop, we started it in 2005. We we're one of very few authentic surf shops in the Great Lakes region. We specialize in starting people out and, and taking somebody who's never surfed before and getting them started. A surf lesson is the best place to start. We sell a lot more than just surfboards. We, we sell the lifestyle, really. And you have skateboards too at your shop. Yeah, you know, skateboards, stand-up paddle boards. We rent sandboards, which you can take out to the local dunes. If you're looking for something fun to do in St. Joe and in Southwest Michigan, we're not a bad place to, to come find that. At Waco Beach, a $10 day pass will get you access to a more personal beach going experience. At sunset, catch the trumpeter who plays taps as the sun dips below the horizon. If you're traveling with a four-legged friend, head to Warren Dunes State Park where you'll find one of the largest stretches of Lake Michigan Beach where dogs can legally splash in the waves. And the ultimate summer beach experience is right here in St. Joseph. Silver Beach's history can be traced back to the late 1890s when two local businessmen opened the Silver Beach Amusement Park. For nearly 100 years, thousands flocked from Chicago to the boardwalk, boasting a grand ballroom, roller coaster, and bumper cars. While the amusement park is a distant memory, families continue to pilgrimage here for a day at the White Sand Beach, a run through the Whirlpool Compass Fountain, or a spin on the vintage carousel. Pick which of the 22 hand-carved wooden horses and 24 other wild creatures you want to ride. When the bell rings, the ride begins, and the vintage organ fills the air with carnival music. It's fun for kids of all ages. What makes these Lake Michigan beaches so popular is the soft, fluffy sand. And it's all thanks to an amazing coastal dune ecosystem. It's a very specialized condition. These can't just form on any lake. The glaciers left the mounds of gravel, the moraines, pulled back from the shoreline in such a way, when they melted back, that there's space for the sand to pile up. We've got Lake Michigan and that you know long, pointy part with the east-west winds. It all just combines just right so that we end up with the best dunes in the world, in my humble opinion. <laughs> no two dunes are the same, right? Exactly, because you know each, each has a different you know, starting place. Down towards the southern end of Lake Michigan, we've got more parabolic dunes, where it's all relatively flat, low-lying, and they can really mound up and sort themselves out. Grasses form, then the shrubs can fill in. Once the shrubs are helping stabilize things, trees come in, so we get these amazing forests on the backside of the dunes. You start getting up farther north, the dunes start taking on different shapes because the glacier left behind different conditions. I mean, it truly is world class. Michigan's got the largest collection of freshwater dunes on the planet. To experience the dunes for yourself, head to one of Michigan's most visited state parks, Warren Dunes. 
Get your heart pumping by making the climb up the nearly 250 foot high dune. Woo! I made it! From the top, and when the conditions are just right, it's possible to spot the skyline of the Windy City 50 miles away. For more tranquil experience, head for the park's trails, which meander through the shaded forest, dune grasses, and to the shore. You know, John, when most people are talking about Michigan wine country, they're talking about this part right up here, the tip of the pinky, right? Well, that's true, but this area is not only home to the state's oldest winery, but it has more than two dozen wineries and vineyards producing some of the best wines in the Great Lakes region. This is the oldest wine region in the state. It goes back to just after settlers settled in the area, early 1800s. We've got great Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Riesling, and we've also um, got enough heat and a long enough season. We do reds very well here. This climate, these soils, proximity to Lake Michigan, these rolling hills, all these things come together to make a situation where we can ripen those and make fantastic wines. Tasting rooms, like White Pine Wineries in downtown St. Joe, are peppered across Berrien County. All of our wines are locally grown and produced. One of the things I love and all my staff are into is, is teaching people about the wines and, and helping them understand why this area is special, why, why the wines that do well here do well. We're trying to highlight the best of the best from the area. We've got a short list, but um, it, it's very good. For a more extensive wine experience, roll your windows down and tour the vineyards along the rural county roads. Round Barn Winery and neighboring Tabor Hills offer expansive tasting rooms and sprawling outdoor settings surrounded by vines. The Tabor Trail connects the two wineries. Get a pour at one, then pick a trail and enjoy your drink as you stroll through woods and vines with glass in hand. Amy, I love a glass of Merlot, but if you're more of a hophead instead of a grape aficionado, there's a plethora of breweries in the area. You have this beautiful outdoor area, you have kids playing, you know, you have groups coming in to go on runs. You, you really have become a destination. It's just a ton of space just to relax, either with your friends, your family, your significant other. Uh, we get buses that pull up from Illinois, Indiana. How many beers do you have on tap typically? We have anywhere from 12 at the low side up to about 20 or 22 at one time. Wow. Yeah. The whole thing, how we gauge what to put on tap is what we like drinking. You know, people ask you all the time, what's your favorite beer right now? And I go, well, what's the weather? What am I eating? How am I feeling, right? right. So you gotta have options. We're 90 minutes from Chicago, so you're more likely to hear, let's go Cubbies, than Tigers in this neck of the woods. But there's one thing visitors from both cities have in common. That's the summertime tradition of biting into a hot dog. And Dog Slinger in Stevensville is just the right place for Coney Dog aficionados and Chicago style enthusiasts to come together. Longtime Frankfurter appreciators, owners Josh and Corey Hathaway, opened the doors to their restaurant in 2021. Josh keeps things authentic with iconic offerings from chili dogs to the Chicago dog on a steamed poppy seed bun with all the traditional toppings, including, of course, a kosher spear. If you're feeling adventurous, head for the specialty menu for a creation you won't find at your local hot dog cart. And you never know what the next worst of the week may be. Can't decide? Let the wheel of indecision pick for you. Oh, no. From a casual hot dog spot for lunch to innovative food for dinner and even one of Michigan's most iconic restaurants, you can find it all right here in Southwest Michigan. At Houndstooth in downtown Benton Harbor, a brother and sister duo took a long vacant space and turned it into a stunning dining destination. The floor is the original floor. The ceiling is original. We put a finish on it. It gives it so much character. So it's new American cuisine uh, with a global inspiration, locally sourced. What is the experience like dining here at Houndstooth? You're going to expect to see a lot of share plates. We try to have a combination of meats and seafoods and we're really veggie forward, so we love our veggies here. The whole premise of the restaurant is that you get to try most of the menu lots of different variety. Each plate looks as good as it tastes. The care of how it's designed is as important as how it tastes, as how it's prepared, as how it's sourced. you got quite a bar out there. It's kind of a rabbit hole of, of ingredients. Fresh like, juices, fresh herbs. Everything fresh, all house-made syrups, eclectic different liqueurs. Local distillers, local brewers, people that are smaller and more artisanal. Houndstooth is going to be a place that's going to be a dining experience that you're going to remember. 
Perched on the bluff along Red Arrow Highway, you'll find a local favorite that's been serving up hospitality, an unstuffy atmosphere, and great seafood since the 80s. Here at Grand Mirror Inn in Stevensville, it's all classic all the time, from the entrees to the service to the vintage decor. Part of our search for Michigan's most iconic restaurant, Grand Mirror, delivered, wowed us with all the entrees. You can see here I have this incredible filet mignon with a lobster tail, one of their top sellers. The rack of ribs, the you know, barbecue full stack there, is so sweet and tasty. I should also mention that the butter is ready to be dipped in. When you can get a butter bath, it's a good day. No matter what time of year you visit in the St. Joe area, don't pass up the opportunity to end your day taking in a Lake Michigan sunset. And that's how water, wine, and delectable places to dine make Southwest Michigan a Michigan's best day. And we'll see you on our next adventure. This episode of Michigan's Best Day was brought to you by the Southwestern Michigan Tourism Council.